Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we'll take a deep dive in the developer mode of the Fossil Gen 5, so let's get started. If you are someone new to our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel as we do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials and much more. We have an entire playlist for Fossil smartwatches where you'll find more detailed videos like this one, make sure to check it out. Before I even start, please hear me out with the disclaimer, developer mode is strictly restricted for developers only, playing around with developer mode is not recommended, you can try out these tricks shown in this video at your own risk, for me it worked and that's why I'm sharing it with you. That being said, let's start by showing you how to enter the developer mode. By default, developer mode is hidden so that the general public cannot access and mess things up. Go in the settings, system, about and click seven times on the build number and you will enter the developer mode which you will find on the main page of the settings under the system now by any chance if you want to exit the developer mode all you have to do is restart the watch now that we have unveiled the developer mode let's see what's inside it with options that will be most useful to regular people so the first three options that i use to make my gen 5 even faster and increase battery life are the animation scales that includes windows animation scale transition animation scale and the animator duration scale in all these you'll find animation scales ranging from times 0.5 to times 10 typically the animation scales are set to times 0.5 but i just prefer to turn it off to make my watch a little bit faster and energy efficient so generally the higher animation scale is directly proportional to the higher stress on the graphical processing unit of the device which will then become a memory and a power hog reducing battery life and performance so you can see the watch feels more faster because there is no animation being rendered now let's go back in the developer mode and the other function that i use is found at the very end called manufacturer service tool in here basically you'll find options to test out various components of the watch like touch to test out the touch screen by drawing lines on the screen you'll pass the test once you clear all the shown tasks once you pass the test it will turn green next is the vibrator where you can test out uh, if the vibrating motors are working or not and upon vibration you can determine if the test passed or failed Next is LCM, where you can test out the color pixels of the watch by tapping on the screen to cycle between preset colors. Next is backlight test, where you can tap on the screen to cycle between various backlight brightness. Next up is the audio playback test. This is only available on a watch with a loudspeaker. And in this test, you should hear the loudspeaker buzzing and be able to control the volume. Next is Wi-Fi, where you have to put the watch in charging and see if the watch gets connected to the access point. Next is Bluetooth, uh, where the watch will scan for the nearby Bluetooth device. In my case, it's already connected to my phone. Moving on is Gyroscope, where you have to rotate the device to test if the gyroscope is working or not. Next is the G-Sensor, where you have to do 6-axis test by rocking the watch forward, backward, sideways and flip to pass the test. Next is the Light Sensor, where you can test it out by placing your hand on the watch and shining a bright light on the watch. After it is the Battery Test, where you will find the battery status, voltage and temperature. Next is the Key Test where you can test out the buttons by pressing them. Moving on is the crown sensor test, only available on Fossil Gen 5 because it's, it's the one that has the rotating crown, where you can test by rotating the crown clockwise and counterclockwise. After that is the microphone test, where you have to speak up in the microphone to see if it's working or not. Next is the PGP and LLOB sensor test, where you have to put the watch on your wrist to see if it detects uh, body sensors like heart rate etc or not. Next is the NFC test to see if the NFC is working or not for the Google Pay. After that is the pressure sensor test to detect the barometric atmospheric pressure so if you don't see any numbers here that means that the sensor is not functioning. 
after that is the GPS test where you have to wait for 120 seconds um, to see if in that time period the watch can pick up your coordinates and satellites. This test is location specific so if you're in a basement you may not get good GPS signal. Next is the e-compass test. Um, just so you know, you don't need to install any compass software because uh, it comes built in in this developer mode as you can see right here. After that is the clear result which will clear up all the above results and last is the exit. Now let me quickly go through all the rest of the developer modes and explain you what they are for. I have already reviewed them in depth on my TickWatch Pro 2020 video linked up here in case you guys wanna check it out once you're done watching this one. The first one is stay awake when charging. It's turned on and it basically keeps the watch turned on when it's in charging. After that is the Bluetooth snoop logging. Uh, if turned on, it keeps the log of all the Bluetooth transmissions. Next is the vibrate on connectivity change. Turning it on will make the watch vibrate if it were to change the connection, that is when you turn on or off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Next is ADB debugging. It's an abbreviation for Android debugging. This is turned off, but basically when you want to manually in install certain files on your watch, then you can turn it on uh, over here. It can be done over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Debugging is always done from the recovery mode. I have done a video on how to enter the recovery mode linked up here in case you guys want to check it out once you're done watching this one. Next is revoke debugging authorization. Pretty self-explanatory. It will revoke any previous debugging authorization. Next is the where developer options, wherein you will find force display burning protection and force low bit ambient mode. Both of them are disabled and I'm not 100% sure what they are for as it's an uncharted territory for me but I guess that they have to do something with the AMOLED screen and ambient mode for the always on display. Next is the allow mock location. This is an option that will allow developer to set any GPS location for testing purpose. Next is the logger buffer size. It's 64 kilobytes in my case. You can change it up to whatever you want, up to one megabytes. Basically, you can store more logs if you have more buffer size, like the Bluetooth snoop logging we talked earlier in this video. Next is the debug layout. Turning it on will turn on the red and blue guidelines for all the screen elements like the buttons, tabs, etc. This is to be used by uh, app developers. The same is also the case with the debug overdraw. It, turning it on will overdraw all the clickable elements with the green highlight on all the clickable options. Moving on is the debug GPU profiling. Turning it on will instantly show you a graphical representation of the GPU, the graphical processing unit, which will change on each scroll. We have already talked about the animation scale, so next is the pointer location. This will basically map a path of whatever you touch on the screen. You can see these lines on the screen wherever I drag. Next is show tabs. This will basically show everywhere you touch. I actually like it, but keep it off as having it on may impact the battery life. Next is the bug report in menu, which will show the bug report in the recovery mode menu. After it is the automatically enable Wi-Fi when charging which is turned on for the fact that I usually update all the apps from the Play Store when I keep my watch on charging as the apps gets updated faster over Wi-Fi. After that is Wi-Fi Verbose Logging. Basically Verbose Logging provides more information than standard logging which is useful for developer for troubleshooting purpose. Next is the mobile battery saver. As the name implies, turning it on will save the mobile phone's battery by not constantly pinging the mobile unnecessarily. Next is the battery optimization, wherein you will find various options which are not available on this watch. Let's go back and lastly it's the show chimera options, uh, which I don't know, but I think it has something to do with the Google Play service. Please comment down below if you know about it so it can help other. So that's it with this video. I wanted to show you how to enter the developer mode, what options you get in the developer mode, test out various sensors of this watch with the manufacturer service tool and few animation options that can really make your Fossil Gen 5 feel faster and improve a bit of battery life on it. 
I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up and maybe give it a thumbs up anyways as an appreciation to our effort for making this video. It really means a lot. And make sure to subscribe as there are more awesome videos coming out which I don't want you to miss out on. Once again, thanks for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.